Join me as we continue to learn about Sifu Eric Carr's Bruce Lee journey and his story in reopening Bruce Lee's original L.A. Jeet Kune Do school. Also, watch Sifu Eric Carr giving me some private instruction on Bruce Lee's Chi Sao, trapping, energy drills, and hear the Bruce Lee story shared with him by his instructor, Sifu Jerry Poteet. Enjoy! Hey guys, Charles Damiano here from the Bruce Lee Collection and today I'm here with Sifu Eric Carr. First of all, I want to thank you for allowing me and my sons to take your class. We had a fun time it here was today. Pleasure. It was a pleasure. So thank you very much. So why don't we talk about a little bit about the 628 College Street, because I visited the school also six months ago and yeah. I was hoping to meet you there and I saw the gates in front. So how did you come about, you know, trying to get the location and like what are you doing with it now and then how you know tell us yeah. uh, why you teach in the park now as opposed to the location what's going on i got, I got answers it's, a, it's a little confusing yeah i know i hear so and then we worked something out where we were going to do something we trained in there and we opened up to the chinatown community so anyone who's come in i told you know stories that happened in the class that yeah. bruce you know jerry and bruce experienced together in the class and all the stuff we got to recreate a lot of the pictures and things yeah I saw, I saw the opening videos you did of it i was so excited when i thought somebody took over bruce lee's school and is now teaching it what awesome. a great way to preserve the legacy of bruce lee and still continue yeah. with the art so that i was, was really excited when that you was did the big that part. yeah thank you that was the big part of it it's uh... They were all black belts at Ed Parker's place, and they ended up they ended up here. Jerry and Danny Lee were the first two to walk into school. So let me stand in front of these guys. Let me get, let me get some to go. So, so this is where it started. After Bruce left back to Hong Kong, he closed the school. Nobody's training here since. This is, you know, there's a dentist office here, there's a pharmacy here. We're back here where it started, where it started for Jerry. I mean, we're the first people in here since uh, since Bruce shut closed it up. So um, let's have some fun. Uh, ultimately, you know, this is not how I make a living. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for me, it was like, okay, this isn't a space that that is. There's no parking. Parking's rough. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. So use it. Uh, we get in there here and there for like special events. Got you. You know, if you come back, we can we can open it up. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. So so it's not ideal for what I do. Um, you know, and here, people get flexibility. You know, parking's. So how long have you been teaching in the park here? I bought a house here nine years ago, so wow. that's when I started here. Yeah, I was in China. I was in Bruce LA. class again. Bruce had three rules for the class. The first was be on time. And Jerry had said that Bruce would lock the door five minutes past, and he said you, you better not knock either, right? Just, <laughs> just go home. Um, the second rule was leave the ego at the door, right? Empty your cup. You come yep. to learn something, forget about what you think you know, and yeah. Yeah. Um, the people would come in and try to prove stuff, things like that, right? Anyway, so the third rule was don't teach outside of class. No, what Bruce was doing, even now, there's stuff that I see that we're doing, hitting on every move, we're switching leads. It's not a lot of people do that. No. Uh, also, uh, no passive moves, things like that. Attack the attack, Bruce's principles. Uh, Bruce painted the glass uh, black, except for a tiny strip at the top at the Chinatown School. So he didn't want people looking in. People looking in. Yeah. Six months after training with Bruce, so Jerry was a black belt under Ed Parker. Six months after training with Bruce Lee, he went back to his old school, and Jerry's exact words, just to see what the guys were doing. He said he was out there sitting there watching them work out. And they in noticed in Jerry Parker School. At Parker at, School. At Parker school. Yeah, so yeah, Jerry went back to Ed Parker's just to see what the guys were doing, was were his words. And he's sitting there watching those guys, and he said there were five black belts down there that, he said three of them 
He said three of them I, uh, I never had any trouble with, but two, they always got the better of me. They noticed Jerry sitting there. Said, hey Jerry, come show us what you learned. He said, you can't do that. He said, okay, well, come spar with us. You know, can you spar? And Jerry looked at me and he says, well, Bruce didn't say I couldn't spar, so I put my gear on and I walked through all of them. <laughs> and he said he felt like- <laughs> All the been, black belts. Yeah, all of them. He was yeah. the, the two that always beat him. Yeah. And he said, you know, he was a black belt as well, but there were two that always, he said, always got the better of me. Well, he said he walked through all of them. And he said it was easy, he was feeling pretty good, right? Like his arms are smoking, he's feeling great. Well, uh, those guys were upset and they went to Ed. Ed said whatever he said, but then he called Bruce Lee at home that night. He said, hey, uh, your student Jerry came to my school and caused trouble. Oh shit. And Bruce said, okay, I'll take care of it. That's all he had to say, right? Yeah. The next day uh, after that class, Jerry used to hang out, you know, help, help Bruce pack up and, and he was usually the last one out the door, but Bruce comes out and he says, hey, this is uh, Jerry playing the part of Bruce. He says, hey, Joey. Jerry, come here. And he comes over and says, yeah. And he says, uh, so I heard you went back to your old school. And he says, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Bruce says, uh, asked him, did, did you have fun? And Jerry's thinking, yeah, it was awesome, but I should probably not say that. He said, no. He says, good. Did you show them anything? And Jerry's look on his face when he told me the story, no. And Bruce said, good. Don't do it again. But as he turned away, he had a big smile on his face. Yeah, he knew he beat. He was one, yeah, yeah, it was one of my favorite stories. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was. He was excited that he exactly. showed them. Yep. Right? Even yeah. though he said, "Don't show them outside." He, yeah, it was, he, he it was the could, wrong thing to do. I mean, Jerry yeah. didn't go in there to challenge people. Right. Yeah. But, you know, he was just but watching. Bruce was excited that he did so well. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he didn't want Jerry to know that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. He couldn't hide it. So that's he, funny. He, turn, he had to turn away with a smile on. Oh, his that's face. a great story, man. One of my favorites. Yeah, that's a great one. Jerry, and Jerry told you these first handy stories. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's very great. Yeah, he told me like yeah throughout my training. Yeah, that's fantastic. Twelve years. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are great stories to hear story, stories from someone who studied directly from Bruce, and then they trans. You get like, like it's okay. There's moves. There's things that Bruce did, right? His 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 uh, week at the house, yeah, and twice a week at the school, and you get the what Jerry would call the essence. You get the you get in the mindset of Bruce, yeah, and you, it's like the finger, the moves, where it was pointing. That's that's the ultimate objective, right? Yep. You look at like. How did it feel to you? Let me think. Don't think. Feel. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. Right. You look at like, what's the long term big big picture? And it's to use what works in a fight. Yeah. And through that, through that, that those those guidelines, the fundamentals of simplicity, right? Yeah. Uh, always hit. Yeah. Those those you know like like I said, you simple, need direct, and non-classical, right? Exactly. Those three elements. That's it. I know. He kept everything so simple. It, that's it, simple things I, work. You know, know how many I champions know. I've seen over the years from the '70s and the '80s. And, you know, in all my career. What I found was simple things work. Yeah. It's like I said, someone gets close enough, kick him in the balls yeah. in the fight. You, there's, you don't get points for style in a real fight. Exactly. Yeah. And if people show off and they try to do this stuff, they, they often get their ass handed to them. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great, man. Well, thank you for sharing that story, buddy. That's my pleasure. We'll have more. We'll yeah, have I more. Got more. Yeah, yeah. I got, I've got more. Give my like, direct translations that come in, but um, I speak Mandarin, and it's actually Mandarin, which is really similar. But um, in a class, it's like, welcome, I had a me. So you get to the way Jared's funny. So, Get light, direct, forward, right hand and right hip. Come with the left, step past your right with your left, both hands out, left the back, and go. Bam. Right, cool. So these are the drills that Bruce developed. Jerry would call these empty hand drills, right. energy drills. Uh, they derived from Chiso, like it's close range, it's, it's uh, Wing Chun, you know, trapping range. Um, Bruce saw, saw a different sort of value in, uh, it, you know, everybody who does Chiso, I'm sure they get something a little different, but the way that was conveyed to me, it's okay, it's not just tactile awareness, mm -hmm. it's not just handling yourself and feeling in trapping range, but also ground range. It's actually more effective there, I Yeah, because you can use You got full energy. contact. Yeah, everything. you, yeah, you pop your hips, you feel an emptiness, right? You, you get something, you feel an emptiness, yeah. it's full body. Uh, but the, the bigger picture for me was like, you know, this is all all ranges. Even out here, look, even 60 feet away, you see somebody, if you're here at night and it's dark, you know, and you see somebody sort of stiffen up a little bit, there are little things that you pick up through these drills, and I call them micro senses. It's like dogs, you know, tail down, ears down, oh, yeah. you know exactly what that is. Yeah, you know what he's gonna do. That's right. So those things like that, you start to notice these things. And in a fight, even at this range, you start seeing somebody in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm exaggerating, right? I'm being really obvious now, but little things, you know what they're thinking. Yeah. When you start thinking about something, you, your body tenses up in certain places. Little things start to happen. Now, the idea was like, I heard Bruce tell, tell a story. Jerry had told me in the class. He said there was about a woodcutter. We love trees, we don't cut trees. 
But um, the guy had been doing this the whole life. The tree opened up, a dragon popped out. And it's just standing there. The guy's thinking, wow, if I take this thing down, drag it back to town, I can retire. So the dragon says, if you try it, I'll burn you to a crisp. And the guy's like, what? What do you mean? And he says, I, I can read your mind. So he went back to swinging, and all of a sudden the axe flew out of his hands, hit the dragon between the eye, and dropped it. Well, what happened? The guy wasn't thinking about it. He'd been doing this his whole life. That's right. He didn't have to think. It was automatic. That's right. And Jerry was it nailed repetition. I, I, I just read something from Custom Model this morning. Yeah. Repetition. Right, Jim Rowe? Repetition is the mother of skill. So you, you repeat it, Jerry would say, until it becomes a party, like second nature, respond to your name. Bruce yeah. said, you know, Charles, or somebody else, Charles, yeah. you just turn and look. Respond like an echo, we used to say, right? It's exactly yeah. right. And they, they, that's it. So these these drills, take it takes the conscious mind out. It also trains your awareness. So the first one is your know, right lead. Cross energy, right? So your hands up. I'm just passive. The first one's passive to get you acclimated. So a lot of people will resist. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll meet that. If I get somebody to chase my hand, I'm going to go here. Okay, I got you. Right? So when you, when you make contact, so you dissolve. Go. And you're going to grab. And you stay in, stay in contact. But you've got two choices here. You can use the thumb on top to, for a quick disengage or grab with the thumb. That, that's, that's yeah, out, right? controlling, yeah. yeah. That's so kind of you got quick motion move, right? Yeah. You can even half beat or, you know, gank, and that's a controlling. So yeah. you've got a choice. But I've had somebody, uh, my friend's Wing Chun class, tried to, oh, don't do that, do this. And um, there's actually and one of the drills that was, one of them is a drill that Bruce modified from Wing Chun. I did a switch and I put in one of Bruce's extra hits. He looked at me and said, what'd you do? And I said, I don't know, I hit you. He didn't say a word to me after that. He looked at me after three minutes, anyhow. So, um, so go back to it. So we're gonna cross, right? There you go, and you stay attached. Hands up, Okay. right? There you go, good. And you stay attached. In two places, you got control here, and you got control here. But all, not only you got control, but if I move, you feel it. Yeah. If there's emptiness here, I got I got space to come out. Right. Right. But if I move, you don't feel it. Right. So that was like Bruce said, to see is to be deceived, to feel is to believe. In this range, he told Jerry, he said, you can't see everything, but you feel it. Yeah. So that's with these drills, especially you know, trapping, and then the inside, you're, you're gonna sandwich my arm against yours, and then you're gonna hew some sandwich. Oh, yeah. Hew, yeah. yeah. But that oh, I see this way, right? Yeah. Then, but you're gonna trap this arm with that. You're gonna oh. checking it. So, okay. so if you do this, right? If I go here, I'm gonna come here. Yeah. But it's soft, so it's here, and it's yeah. So like swing up against my arm. Here, soft. This oh, hand's just a checking hand. I got, I got another story about Jerry snatched this check out of my hand and I was trying to pay for something and I didn't feel it. And this, this that, seeing in action drove home this, the, the, the importance of being soft. Yeah. Yeah. So then we mix them up and then you start going to the shoulder and then you go straight on and make it more realistic. Yeah, yeah. But these aren't fight moves. It just drills the train. Sensitivity. Oh, that's and, it. Yeah. Exactly. We got a series of them. So there's cross energy. There's the Wampak, right? There's the harmony spring. So Wampak is um, stand square and you punch. Now if I do nothing, I get hit. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, is Jerry called this a no shit move. I'm going to pop just enough to clear the line for the punch. Economy of motion. Then you chamber just enough and you pop to move my hand and punch. You punch over or well, under, right? Oh, under. Okay. Yeah, otherwise you have to go all the way over your arm. Pock and, and, and so I'm coming it. under? Exactly. So oh, I got punch. you. Chamber. No, I come back. You just chamber. Or pock. Okay, yeah. Pock with that uh, left. Oh, under? Yeah, see? Oh, I got it's you. quicker, so you don't have to go all the way over your arm. Right. Yeah. Just pock and hit. So you're good? So, so here, right? Yep. And chamber. Oh, come back? Yep. Yep, chamber. Pock and hit. Oh, yeah. Under though, right? Yeah, yeah. just like that. Yep. Uh, oh, I got you. So you don't have to go all the way here. It's just right there. It can actually help you get down. I'm doing chamber. Oh. The chamber first, and the pop, and then punch. Yeah. So chamber, pop, two. Yeah. There you go. There you go. That way, if I get a hold of this arm, I don't have that one. You can sweep, punch that. There you go. If your arm's under, I get a hold of it. I got both of them. Yeah, you're trapping me, right? Exactly. Now, I'll switch. Now, this hand follows this arm. There you go. Good. Hell yeah. All right. Yep. Yep. And, and but as we do these, you, you change the timing, and you there's some. You put a jut in there. Other progression. Yes, yeah, so you could jut down. It, exactly. Jut and then hit first. If that doesn't work, then you pop and hit. There's the harmonious spring, which is like, you know, yeah. So I, I jut and you swing back, straight at me. So yeah. So the lesson here is to like grab my arms. Like I say, you got my arms, right? I got yours. As long as you're hanging on to me, uh, you can't use your hands. And I know where your hands are at. Mm -hmm. So you have to let go to hit me. So let go of one. As soon as you do, I, I'm gone. So that was, a, a, you know, hypothetical like so application. It's a spring, right? It's a spring. Yeah. So Jared, Bruce had taught him it's a spring between your elbow and your body. 
and as it shut, and, I, yeah, and as you swing, guess what? You deflect, as you, you hit back, you deflect my, my attack. We'll take it out of the range, throw a jab at me, right? I can get inside there, I don't have to block. There's no passive move, but I beat you to it. And you yeah. can't throw the cross until you pull this back. So I'm, I either get out or I gotta hit you twice before you pull that hand back and launch it. Yeah. So those are, so those are the, some of the, the, the applications. You know, they're not fight moves, but there's application to that drill. Um, inside lap style switch, have you seen that one? Mm. I haven't done these in a while, but See here. So now I've got hands on the inside. So the outside, I can't, I can't hit. Now the harmonious springs got other, other um, progressions also. So the jut, and then you just like go and hit, then emptiness, right? So you, you get less of a warning. Now I'm on the inside. Now, I, now we got forward pressure, and I got forward pressure. And forward pressure was a big deal. Everything's forward because you're funny. So I can't right. get through. So this time I got a lock. So as I lock, you inside. There you go, just like that. Right now, imagine, yeah, imagine if I'm, if, if like I've got your a hand, I'm trying to pull your hand away against the wall or on the ground to swing. All of a sudden, you, you switch inside and punch first. Yeah, yeah. So if I if I'm here, I'm wrestling, I get your hand out, right? And bam. Yeah, exactly. So and you kind of using exactly you switch inside. Now I found that the hewn style works really well on the ground. If somebody's got your hands and I slip out. Yeah. And I've had people ask me, like, well, what'd you do? I'm a hoon sow? Yeah. I used to do that when they real, were real simple motion, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I can already see it. Yeah, they would grab me and I'd be hoon sowing. They used to hear me uh, say those terms. Yeah, so he remembers that. Yeah. Demisa, pair up with uh, Pierre. Um, then there's the uh, the bong sow drill, which in Wing Chun is called side lock, and they do it square. So Bruce did it in a, in a lead, because oh, yeah, okay. so so you don't necessarily in, in Wing Chun you like as you probably know right you, you lose contact yeah. exactly right so so Bruce we go to an unmatched so go back to yeah so you're on a right uh, and I'm on a left so go go left yeah exactly so Bruce switch made it this way right so from here I go for the switch okay. you switch leads go for it yeah now go ahead Bruce put some uh, right you want to switch. The extra uh, hits. You see, well, I'm doing something. I'm hitting at the same time. I got you. Yeah. He would, yeah. So he would do like maybe swing here, right, and then high again, and then high again. Oh, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Now what do you got? Yep. Yep. You got the repost. Good. You got to go for a hit, then. Oh, so you did that? I, you I could come do that. here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could do that too. So you come here and then you bounce exactly, out, right? Exactly. The yep. repost, right? Fencing, like a fencing move. That's where we're. Good. And then there's the empty hit. Now I just slip, I slip out of range and you bump. Oh, right. There you go, yeah. So there's no yeah. contact. You have to see this one, right? Now, there, yeah. And then you can also go to low lock. Because we're, our hand's already down here, right? If you pull out a punch, I could slip and then do an under lock. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So right from here, you're grabbing and lopping, right? That's the first one, yeah. Yeah. And then you got the repulse. Now, now the other one is like, just let this pass. Touch. You have to touch. Oh, just punch. Yeah. So, so just let it pass. It's, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just let it punch. Slip. There you go. Do it again. So like, as I go by, as soon as it crosses the center, Jerry would say, you throw the punch. So there's no time wasted. Oh, I got you. As soon as it crosses. Yeah. So instead of blocking, I'm kind of you're passing me, and I'm just kind of punching it here. Let me go. So if I'm swinging this way. Just you can, yeah. Oh, you can pull back if you need, you know, but that's it. As soon as it passes, hit. And make yeah. sure you put a little bit of... Good stuff. Yeah. Awesome, man. Good nice, tip. man. Thank you so much. A little it's too much extra money. Yeah, so right at the bottom, you got to be subtle. So right at the bottom, right? You want to make sure that the first way, yeah, so the second, you grab. Grab. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So you're doing kind of like good. sliding. Now you can grab and push it over there. Yeah. That's our hat. See, you can chop it. You're locking me up there. So let's see again. Yeah. We just do a lock style. Lock style is you're just going to put the hand down and then you're going to come here. Lock and punch. It's a pulling technique. So really, if you if this happens, somebody threw a punch, you're going to go, oh, oh, yeah. And I think it's it a snap punch. punch. Like, Which shit, we're just practicing. It's still right. So you come in here, and then we'll switch to this side. And then we're going to go like this. And then you're on this side. Good. So Bam, good. You're not pulling me enough for me to actually get in there. Exactly, I need to do this. I need to be the only one. See it? Wait till you pull my <laughs> See, now I can pull this one, and then we're going to be on this side. So now I pull this hand, 
I know what you said. And that's how you keep switching. Because of this and that. And I, I, I remember the video that I saw of like Hawkins Chung and all the guys in it after he passed. The video was like late 70s and you know, had big hair and his style of clothes. And they were doing cheese on their walking. And I showed them this. I said, well, guess what? And every time you step, you're in the lead. It doesn't matter. No, exactly. So, you know, for me, like, I look at it like this. Okay, cheese style for me is like a microcosm of a fight. I can hit, mm -hmm. I can pull, yep. right? I, I can push, yep. I can grapple, right? Um, you know, I can choke, come around for choke. You can do all these things, uh, and, and you can do like a single direct, right? You can do um, uh, attack by combination, I go one, two, you know, two, three, something, you know? Um, mobilization attack, right? You can do that. Um, progressive indirect, you know, progressive indirect, right? Uh, and also attack by draw. You know, I could give you some pressure, you can give me that pressure back, you take it, right? So all the five ways of attacking, there's a good way to demonstrate that, how it works, and how it sort of um, it applies in a fight. You get, you know, single direct, easy. Uh, attack by combination, you need two or more strikes. And a mobilization attack, I'll, I'll, I'll stand on people's toes. I'll, I'll get the foot at you, I'll step on it. Or it's a quick pocket hit. Um, Jut, I love Jut. So I'll get out here, you know, yeah, so I'll get just inside someone's punching me. I'll smother the kicks a little bit. I'll, I'll, give them, I'll stand an unmatched lead, so I get further away from this. I'm close to that. So they're likely going to throw this. I'll jut and I'll take the hit. But I take the step that close the distance so yeah. I can land. You angle a little bit, right? Exactly. Get yeah. further away from yeah. that from yeah. this hand. Exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. Progressive indirect. Sometimes I'll stand out here and I'll smack a hand, get them to yeah. do something, okay. right? Or I'll, yeah, I'll smack a hand, get their attention, you know, uh, tension up here, and then go low. So yeah. it's a draw. I drew the attention. Yeah. So all yeah. that stuff can work in, in this range. So I like Chisao uh, for that example. And, and again, like I said, you're taking the mind out. You've got all these pieces here where you start to represent, you know, yeah, there you go. And it's all without thinking about it. <laughs> all these drills fit together. Right, guess where we're at. Exactly. Now what? Wampa. Exactly. Oh, look at that. Yeah, they all fit together. If I go here, we got the cross there. Yeah. Right? So, even here. Jump and hit. Harmonious spring. So, if I can come here, right? If you do that? If I, if I hear you, can spring back punch. You don't have to switch out. Oh, just. Uh, so you're on the inside already. So, if I do this, just like that. Oh, you're on the inside. Instead of rolling outside, you stay on the inside. Exactly. And punch. You, you, got the, you got the benefit of being on the inside. Yeah. You know, the inside lane is the faster one. And, it, and it's less motion. If I do do this, you just dead, you just bring back the hit. Ah. That's a draw. If I'll you do that. Had me, I was always trained to kind of do a you can, you out of it. Twist out. Then, yeah. You can twist out of it. Yeah. You twist out of it. Yeah. Twist out. And then it usually leads into a lops out. You could do that. Yeah. So if I if I get um, here and I get you to put a hand up, right? I start to twist. twist. Yeah. Now you got me. Now if you could reverse this, right? Now there you go. Yeah. Shit, yeah. yeah. A trap there, right? Exactly. Like if whenever there's contact somewhere, you've got to, um, you know, it's even like put your hand up. Even this. Who's going to get here faster? One of us. Yeah. Right? As far as, as far as that, as that, you know, that reverse. If I throw a punch and our hands touch, Bruce tell Jerry, said whoever's got the better sensitivity and speed is going to go first, right? Yeah. yeah. So as soon as our hands touch. As soon as you're here, you can feel it. Yeah. You're either going to pop or you're going to lock, right? Or, so disengage. Or, or, yeah, or, yeah. So I, yeah, so if I got, exactly, you got a hand there, right? So, yeah. so you're not setting it free. So these mechanics have to happen instantly. Yeah. And this is a part. This is part of your nervous system. This isn't your brain working. There's no logical piece here where you can stop and think about it. It's not yeah. Chess. That's the great thing about G cell because it's the sensitivity deal, right. right? So you're not thinking anymore. Everything's reacting after it a while. It does it. Yeah. That's what Bruce said. Max. It, it, there was a night uh, in class. You know, he and Jerry were packing up, and he came out and said, Jerry. Let's do some cheese salad. And he says, no hits. And Jerry says, no hits. He says, no, we'll just roll. So they're rolling. And all of a sudden, bam! Bruce hit Jerry in the chest. And he says, hey, I thought you said no hits. And Bruce said, I didn't hit you. It hit you. The emptiness was there and his arm went. Yeah. And that's what has to be in a fight. And by the time someone's swinging, if you're analyzing it, you're already hit. You can't think about it. Yeah. yeah. It's funny how he then used all those lines in the movies, right? And after the dragon. And the dragon, the right? The director's cut. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That was exactly. great. Yeah. It it's it, all by itself. It, it, it's all by itself. Which is yeah. what makes his movies memorable. Martial art itself.
memorable. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid and I saw Enter the Dragon, that piece was one that stuck out. That when he stomped on Bob Wall's chest, like just the emotional look yeah. on his face. That like I remember like I, I probably stopped breathing, you know, watching it. But those are the pieces that, that stand out to most people, yeah. and myself for sure. Um, How much to Chi Sao did Jerry actually do as part of his class? Was a lot. Small, oh, was it a big oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned Chi Sao from Jerry. I'm yeah. pretty good. You know, I've had, I've, like I guess I've guys Wing Chun, and we work out all the time. Yeah, no, you have you have like Wing Chun hands. You can feel it. Yeah, yeah so Jerry taught me, but it was yeah. always with the emphasis of no, you want to do yeah. it. always hit. always think hit, think hit. Just always hit. That's yeah. the principle of JKD, that's right? The point. Think hit. So the minute you feel the opening there, you're hitting, you're hitting, right? Yeah, it's not blocking. The whole point of the fight yeah. is to hit. You know, even here, it's like okay, you know, you got good, good. I, there's nothing getting through, so I have like. Something that Bruce said that I like to apply to the situation. He said, "To hell with circumstances, I create opportunity." So, what do you do? You got to create that opportunity. I got, I got to find something, bam, to, to make that work. And the idea is, when you're training it, you can't wind up for it. You feel, you feel that coming. You start thinking about it. And if I, yeah, if you feel my energy going this way, then you're gonna boom, right? I'm gonna take it. Yeah, like what? But, exactly, but if you start thinking about something, like okay, yeah, exactly. You have to react. You feel it. Yeah. To myself and to express myself honestly, you know, that, my friend, is <laughs> very hard to do. And you have to train. You have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it, it's there. When you want to move, you're moving. And when you move, you are determined to move. Not taking it one inch, not anything less than that. If I want to punch, I'm going to do it, man, and I'm going to do it. Stay tuned for part three as we continue to learn about Sifu Eric Carr's Bruce Lee journey in his quest to learn Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do from first generation student Jerry Poteet. Also have fun watching Sifu Eric Carr teaching his Jeet Kune Do class, sharing Bruce Lee's stories and giving me some private training on Bruce Lee's Chi Sao trapping and also see me attempt to spar one of his JKD students and much much more coming soon.